code coverage analysis increases code quality. It answers questions like, do my tests adequately exercise every bit of my application? And do I have code that doesn't belong in my application? Whether the drive for more software quality comes from a business goal to reduce cost and risk, or is a requirement for certification to DO-178, EN-5128, IEC-61508, or ECCS E40B, Gnat Coverage will help. We're excited to show you what Gnat Coverage does, how easy it is to use, and how some new capabilities in Gnat Coverage 21 can help software engineers meet high software quality standards. Gnat Coverage is your all-in-one code coverage tool. Using it is a two-step process. First, it thoroughly tracks the execution of your program and records this information in a trace file. Then, by analyzing one or more trace files, Gnat Coverage can compute coverage metrics and produce reports. For any coverage tool to track the execution of a running program, you need some kind of instrumentation. You could instrument the hardware, for instance, by attaching a hardware debug probe to an embedded device. Or you could observe an execution environment by using an instrumented emulator. And finally, new this year for Gnat Coverage, you can instrument the software by instrumenting your source code. Source code instrumentation capability gives us a significant speed boost on native platforms and gives us the ability to measure more things than we could in the past, such as coverage of shared libraries and coverage of code running on embedded systems without hardware debug interfaces. Using any of these three methods, Gnat Coverage can gather metrics on programs running on embedded systems with an RTOS, on bareboard embedded systems without an OS, and on native platforms. Once these measurements have been recorded in binary or source execution trace files, Gnat Coverage can then perform object code coverage analysis on binary traces or source code coverage analysis with either binary or source traces. Object code analysis is concerned with machine instructions, and there are two levels of rigor. You can determine whether every instruction in our code has been executed, and you can check that every conditional branch has gone both ways. Source code analysis can be done with three levels of rigor. Statement analysis can tell you whether every source statement has been executed. Decision analysis tells you whether every decision has gone every way and Modified Decision Decision Coverage, or MCDC, checks that every component of a decision is properly exercised. Code coverage analysis is generally performed while the code is being tested. Whether the test harness is a physical environment that, say, a robot traverses, or is a software unit test harness maintained by a tool like Gnat Test, Gnat coverage can gather trace information as the program executes. Recording an execution trace is easy to do from Gnat Studio. Here, we have a unit test harness for a PowerPC bare metal application. In the Gnat test common project file, we need to make sure that the target and runtime attributes are set correctly for our embedded target. Then, in the test driver project file, we'll set the coverage levels. Next, we'll build the program using Analyze, Coverage, Gnat Coverage, Build, main file. The compilation options dash F preserve control flow and dash F dump scos are necessary for coverage analysis and they're automatically set for us. Now we have a cross compiled test runner executable. We can use Gnat coverage to run our tests and collect trace information by going to analyze, coverage, Gnat coverage, run, main file. Under the hood, an emulator is launched. Our application module is loaded and invoked, and the emulator records the execution trace of our code as the test harness exercises it. And then finally, we'll use that trace file to generate a report with analyze, coverage, connect coverage, generate report, main file. The report pops up in the Gnat Studio interface, and anything that is not covered is flagged and visible.
using the tool via the command line is also possible. Here, we have a testing campaign for an ARM Cortex-M series microcontroller target in STM32F4. Last time, we adjusted our project file to set the hardware target, the runtime, and coverage levels. It's also possible to not change your project files at all and provide the options on the command line. First, we cross-compile our executable using GPR build, making sure to specify the target, the runtime, and our compilation flags. Then we can type gnatkov run with the desired coverage level, project file, and executable to launch our program under the emulator. An invocation of gnatkov coverage follows with options to control the coverage analysis and report type. An annotated version of your source code can be produced with information from the coverage analysis. GNAT coverage can perform object level and source level coverage on embedded platforms using a probe or using an emulator. But what about native platforms? What about embedded hardware without a probe interface? Well, in the past, we used an instrumented execution environment based on Valgrind or Dynamo RIO on native platforms. This worked, but it had several drawbacks. Shared libraries were unsupported because it was impossible to reconstruct the relationship between binary trace data and source code locations for dynamically linked libraries. Furthermore, binary trace information gets to be very large, and when examining long-running applications, storing and analyzing such large amounts of information was infeasible. And finally, running instruction by instruction underneath Valgrind or Dynamo RIO incurs a large performance penalty. As for examining code on hardware without a probe, we simply had no solution. GNAT Coverage 21 includes a new source instrumentation capability that addresses many of the drawbacks we just mentioned. The only caveat is that this method measures code that's different compared to what you would ship, but there are many advantages. Because instrumenting the source code allows us to work at the same level of abstraction as the code being examined, we get to record more precise coverage information. It also makes it possible to analyze code in shared libraries, since source-based instrumentation is unaffected by how your executable was linked. Rather than incurring a performance penalty as much as 40 times when using Valgrind or Dynamo RIO, we have measured around 1.8 times. The size of source-based execution traces is constant, regardless of how long your program runs for or how many statements or decisions are satisfied, which makes examination of long-running programs feasible. And finally, it now becomes technically possible to extract execution trace information using arbitrary communication channels such as serial links so that you can perform coverage analysis even on hardware without interfaces for probe connections. The source instrumentation process was designed to have much in common with the way GNAT coverage is already used. First, you collect trace information, and then you analyze it. Well, there is a preliminary step. You do need to copy a runtime directory, run GPR build on it, and then run GPR install. I've already done that, and I'll set my GPR project path to point there. Running GNATCOV instrument with a project file, a coverage level option, and an option to write the trace file at program exit will generate our modified sources. These modified sources can be seen in these gnatkov instr directories. We'll build this instrumented version of our program using GPR build. Gnat coverage is designed to be as unobtrusive as possible and we can use our unmodified project file to build our instrumented sources. We'll add options to GPR build to use modified sources in those GNATCOV instr directories and to make all our projects with that local runtime directory, you know, the one that we set our GPR project path to, so that our modified sources have access to the instrumentation runtime. And finally, execute the program to produce trace information. 
So now our trace information has been recorded into a file. The rest of the workflow is the same, using Gnatkov coverage with our project file, a coverage level option, a reporting method, and our trace file. We produce a coverage report based on the trace information from our testing run. Gnat coverage is capable of more than we've shown here. You can collect trace data from hardware probes and have Gnat coverage convert that information. Gnat coverage also has a very powerful capability of being able to consolidate disparate runs into a single coverage report. So, if your code under interest is exercised in different ways by different executables, or you need to run your program multiple times with different inputs to gain full coverage, Gnat coverage can take multiple trace files and report how well your common units of interest have been covered. On our roadmap, we're exploring some additional mechanisms to specify exemption regions. Exemption regions are places where we tell the tools that it's okay for coverage to be incomplete. Currently, we use pragmas and sources, which are intrusive in some cases. Gnat Coverage 21's new source instrumentation capabilities make it more accessible, more versatile, and much, much faster on native platforms. It's our hope that you will use this tool to improve your software quality everywhere. For more information about Gnat Coverage, speak with sales at adacore.com, read our recent articles on blog.adacore.com, ask questions on Gnat Tracker if you're a customer, and visit us at www.adacore.com.